If you've watched my channel long enough, you know that I like to use panel clamps to do a lot of my glue ups. The way that panel clamps works is that after you slide all your pieces in, and this is after you've glued them all up, you'll turn the knobs on each one of these. I go with my clamps and I come in and I just clamp everything up. This is a really good system as it keeps all these boards on the same plane. With the clamps, I put the pressure on the sides and basically I've got pressure on all four sides, which usually ends up with a very good glue up. The way that these work is that I put a lot of pressure on the outside of my pieces and I'm not really tightening these down a lot. I'm only putting enough pressure to really keep them from moving up and down. But let's say that some of these need to be pulled into an alignment. So I really want to pull them all together. To do this, I want to use something called calls. Now the way that calls are usually made is they're cut with a bow in the center and you take the two pieces on either side of your boards, of your panels, whatever you're gluing up, and you squeeze them together. And that not only puts pressure on the ends, but the center where it's being squeezed together. One thing that I've really never liked about calls is that because they are made out of wood, you take a chance that they're gonna to glue to the surface of your wood. There's ways that you can do that by adding tape, but I've never liked the idea of my calls being glued to the top of my project. But I finally came up with something that really works, and I'm gonna share that with you today. To make these, you really only need a few materials. You'll need the square tubing, a couple nuts, and some bolts. I'm using really long bolts here so that I have a, a very wide area that I can open this up to. Unlike my panel clamps, these bolts won't be used to tighten down the bars. Instead, these are really just to make sure that they don't move out of alignment this way or like this. The real trick for this though is to bend these. These are very rigid. I was really surprised at how much it took to actually bend one of these. So they are very rigid. You're also gonna to need to keep in mind your length. Now these are 18 inches long and these will work really well with the small things that I usually do. If you're going to do things that are going to need longer calls, then you'll want to use a different size square tubing. This is an inch by an inch. I think they make them up to an inch and a half by an inch and a half or even two inch by two inch. I would certainly go with the thickest that I could go if I were planning on doing something like gluing up a table or something. As you can see, these are bent and let me show you how I did it. I took a two by six and I measured in halfway. Now my two by six is just slightly larger than my, my tubing by about an inch altogether. So I've got about a half inch on either side. I came in the center, made a mark, and then I came in a half of an inch and then I drew marks from the center out to each end. And then I cut this on the bandsaw. Now let me show you a couple ways that you can bend these. You'll first obviously wanna make sure that you get all your pieces cut before you move on to this next step. And a good rule of thumb is that when you go to measure these out, they're gonna be like this. You really wanna find the center between each of your holes. Another really important thing about the square tubing is that you need to hold it in your hand and you need to feel the front and the back of it. When each one of these are drilled out, it's pushed like this. So you have one side that is very smooth and is actually sunken in a little bit. On the other side, you can hear it catch. So this is smooth. You can hear it catch on that side. These actually have kind of like a tear out on the other side of it. So you wanna make sure that the smoother side is going to be in the inside. So both of my smooth sides here are pointed in the inside like this. Very important, otherwise you're gonna be leaving those scratches on the top of your surface. It's gonna look like a bunch of circles. It's not gonna look good. I've gone and found each side where the divot sticks up. Again, my divot's right there. And right here it's smoother. And on the smoother side, I put a star on it. Now when I go to bend this, I'm gonna to wanna to have that smoother side facing down towards my angle. The first way I'm gonna show you is with a hydraulic press. Now, most people don't have hydraulic presses, so this is just one way that I'm gonna show you. If you do plan on using a hydraulic press of some kind, you're not gonna to want to use the half inch. The half inch that we created a little bit earlier is gonna be a little bit too big. So instead of doing the half inch in the center, you'll want to go down to a quarter of an inch. There is just so much pressure that you end up actually crushing it and bending it a little bit too much. So I've got this lined up so that the center that I cut out, that quarter inch, is gonna be right in the center of my, whatever you call this, piston, whatever. Then I'll have my metal piece, again, 
with that star, the, the flat side, the smoother side of the this holes here, that's going to be pointed down and that's going to be centered on the two by six. I think you should be able to see this. You can see there's just a slight bend. It does not need to be a lot. If it is a lot, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be difficult to clamp. The second way and the way that most people are going to want to do it is the half inch method. Our half inch that we marked earlier is going to go in the center like this. We're going to cut it on the bandsaw. And then I've got my metal piece here. It's going to go in the center of that. I'm going to add a riser block for my bench. Lift this up a little bit. And then again, my star, which is the smoother side, is going to go against that cut that we made. This time I'm going to use pipe clamps. Most people have pipe clamps or a clamp of some kind, even a C clamp would work. But I'm going to do one in the center and then I'm going to do one on the side. Then I'm going to put one on the other side. Again, I don't want to bump into my handles. And really this does two different things. This puts pressure on both sides of your steel stock here, which is good because sometimes they want to slip off. But it also allows you to get a better bite on the center. And that's really good right about there. You don't need to go all the way to the base. I tried to do the same thing with a quarter inch gap though, and it was not bending. So this does work. But again, if you do use a hydraulic press, you are going to want to do that at a quarter of an inch because that will snug it right up to that inside edge. And if you look at it, it's kind of hard to see that there is a bend to it until we put a ruler on it. And you can see that bend. A third option, if those don't work for you, is to again, use a quarter inch and a sledge. I'm not really crazy about this idea. You might try taking a wedge that has that same quarter inch span that goes on the other side and you will want it to be a little bit thicker and then just try hammering it in. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it works, but that's another option. To finish this up, I'm gonna use some 5 16 inch hex bolts that are eight inches long. Each set will have a couple lock nuts. You could just jam a couple nuts together if you just wanted to do that. But there we go. Now there is gonna be a little bit of pressure needed to close these up. And obviously there's a reason for that, but that kind of pressure is gonna be the same with wooden calls as well. Wooden calls actually are a little bit more wider in the center because there is a lot more play to it. These have very little play. So if you really don't like using these, you might try out my panel clamps. I'll have a link to that in the description below. But let me show you how these work. But before we do that, I almost forgot we need to add some paste finishing wax to our calls. This will prevent our glue from sticking to the steel as well as sometimes the, the steel will leave behind some black marks and we don't want that. So we'll just go ahead and add a little bit on top now. And we really only need to do the inside of the calls. We don't need to worry about obviously doing the outside. And it does look like it's removing the stars that I added earlier, which is good. I've got all these glued up now and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide these in. This can be a trick sometimes to get it to work. Now, the best thing that I've found to do so far is to use a C-clamp. A C-clamp gets it down so that I can put another clamp on. We'll come back when this is dry and we'll check it out. It's done and I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be able to show how tight each one of these boards are, but they are absolutely on the same plane. So much so that when I go to take off the glue, I'm only getting the glue. There's nothing else that's shaving off with it. I love the panel clamps that I have, but 
this is really nice, really nice. If you have the opportunity to make these steel calls, I would do it. Well, let me see if I can get you close enough to this so that you can see that there's no gap at all. That's zoomed in as far as I can go and there's just nothing. You can't tell where the boards meet. And usually this only happens when I run it through my planer when I'm done. As to whether or not there was just too much clamping pressure on the boards, I see nothing, there's no damage at all. It looks really good. I've also checked to see if there's any chance that I'm bending it back. They all still have their original bend. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that you're interested in. I have full step-by-step -step plans that you can check out right now. It'll give you all the tools, materials that were used, everything so that you can build them yourself. It's all absolutely free. This is a labor of love for me. So let me know what you think and throw me a like if you do like this. Take a second and look at the names on the patron list at the end of this. These people help out with the expenses of the website and everything else. So please give them the thanks. Mm -hmm.